Let us pray. Mighty Father, King of glory, we exalt your name. We give you praise. We thank you so much for the wonderful messages that you have brought forth to us in this switch edition. You intend for us to switch into brightness, into knowledge, into wisdom, into knowledge and understanding of your mind. You intend for us to switch from lower level to higher level and thriving in our ministry, in our marriage, and in the marketplace. So, Father Lord, thank you for the message you have given to us in ministry. Thank you for the message you've given to us and the wisdom you've imparted in the market concerning the marketplace. Now, the marriage, Father, we pray that you will speak to us, that you will bless all of us. Father, I pray that you grant me all chance to speak out your mind and that you will bless every one of us here today and open our eyes and teach us things to do to improve, teach us to, to get the right direction and to make our marriage healthy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus again as we have our seats. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. I will go very fast. We have been blessed in them um, concerning thriving. Blossoming, thriving, succeeding in ministry. We have been blessed by the Lord's servant, the King of Barrow, when he was speaking to us about wisdom. The necessary wisdom we should have at this time to excel in the marketplace. This is the end time. And as we come to the end time, we come to the season of intense attack. Intense opposition against the kingdom of God. Both in marriage, in ministry, and in the marketplace. So we thank the Lord for the wisdom that we got. That is shared to us concerning succeeding in our areas of assignment in the marketplace. Now concerning marriage. Just like what my wife just said. No ministry can be successful without a successful home. No business can impact people spiritually without successful home. So therefore, I want to speak on marriage, the bedrock for thriving, the bedrock for breakthrough, the bedrock for success, Marriage, the bedrock, the foundation for excelling. Right from the beginning, when marriage was instituted in the Garden of Eden, the Lord had pronounced his blessing and has declared his mind concerning marriage, concerning the marriage institution. God had declared his mind right from the beginning. I want to read a passage of the scripture for us. Yeah. Okay. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything. Over everything that moves on the earth. So we look at that, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Once again, I'm talking by the help of the Holy Spirit on marriage, the bedrock, the foundation for successful life, the foundation for successful ministry, foundation, for successful living. So, we look at that Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and we see that there is a pronouncement of five blessings in that Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, 28. Five-fold blessing. The Lord came and then he pronounces that God created man and then God blessed them. At the creation of man, God created man and in his image, 
in the image of God created in them. Male and female, he created them. When he brought them together, he pronounced blessing upon them. He said, God bless them. And God said to them, be fruitful. So we see blessing of fruitfulness pronounced upon marriage institution. Blessing of multiplication. Right from the Garden of Eden when it was instituted. When the Lord created marriage, when the Lord instituted marriage, he pronounced blessing upon it right from the start. It's as if marriage, from God's point of view, is programmed for fruitfulness, programmed for multiplication, programmed for subduing and taking over, programmed for replenishing the earth, that is, filling the earth with good things, filling the earth with God's mind, filling the earth with God's mind, with, with, with good fruit. And then, it's, and then marriage is, the Lord commanded marriage, commanded home, the union was commanded to have dominion. So you will look at this statement, you will look at that verse, you will see, he said God bless them and God said, be fruitful. It's like command. It's like a command. It's an, it's an order. Be fruitful. It, it, it is just, it is just, every couple has the ordained blessing from God. Marriage is programmed and ordained by God to walk in these five-fold blessings. When God was creating marriage, when he was, when he was creating the marriage institution, he had pronounced upon it blessings of fruitfulness, blessings of multiplication, blessings of, of taking over, blessings of, of replenishing the earth, that is, filling the earth with good things, filling the earth with fruits of marriage. I'm not talking about biological fruit alone. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the blessings of marriage. There are some marriage that they don't even have fruit of the womb yet, but they are blessings to the world. They are multiplying. They are blessings. They, 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 they fill the earth with joy. All their environment, their surroundings, they, they, people could feel the presence of God in, in, in such marriage, even though they don't have the fruit of the womb yet. So, some marriages fill the heart with joy. Some marriages fill the heart with blessings. Some marriages fill the heart with great innovations. So, in the, in, 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 it is just like commanding that the Lord gives to the sun. Let there be sun, and there was sun. Let there be moon, there was moon. Let there be two great lights, one ruling the day, one ruling the night. Let there be animals, and the animals came forth. The same thing the Lord gave the order. Concerning marriage, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the heart. So when the Lord was creating marriage, I pray today that every one of us in our marriage, we shall experience the original plan of God concerning our home and our marriage in the name of Jesus. There is something in the heart of God. There is a blessing. There is a programming in the heart of God concerning them. It's the first institution. It's the first institution God created. And you will discover that at this time, it is what the devil is battling against. The devil is fighting against it. The war, the war started from outside the church and then later it entered into the church. In those days when we hear of divorce in the marriage, ah, divorce in the church, ah, it's abomination. In those days when we hear uh, two couples fighting, ah, it's abomination. You will see pastors rising up, church members, workers standing, rising up and to be, to be talking to each, each party. But today, it has become, it is becoming common. It is becoming normal. <laughs> that that, that they, 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 you see some, even some pastors, some, some men of God, some pastors, some ministers of God, they, 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 they take the they as divorce, and then he, talking about the, the, when I was with my um, third ex, ex is becoming common and normal. That some people, they take glory in it. And some people, they, 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 when, when, the, when the group of exes are talking, when the group of exes are talking, and then they'll be asking them, and what is your own rank? He said, my, I have one uh, ex rank. When, we, when, when I divorced my first husband, so go and sit down. This is my sixth ex. He paid the sixth, the sixth star general is talking. So let the one general sit down. They take glory in it, and it is a battle. The, what the Lord created at the Garden of Eden and pronounced fivefold blessing upon is what the devil is fighting against. And it's unfortunate that the devil brought the battle into the church. 
and what we pray for every one of us here. Our marriage shall survive in the mighty name of Jesus. And our marriage shall experience exactly what the Lord wants you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. So therefore, when the Lord commanded the sun to be and the sun was be, commanded the moon, the moon came, commanded the animal, animal came. Why is it that the Lord commanded marriage be fruitful and the devil attack that? Multiply and the devil attack that. Replenish the earth and there is a war concerning that. And have dominion over forces. When you took up, Jesus Christ said, wherever the two of you shall agree together concerning anything shall be done. And one shall put, one shall put to flight a thousand. Two shall put to flight how many thousand? Ten thousand. That is power of dominion. And I pray all this shall manifest in our life, in our home and marriage in the name of Jesus. So, I, we discover that the precondition for commands, for the fivefold blessing therefore, must be to obey before, it, before this blessing can manifest. It is true. The Lord commanded the sun, commanded the trees, commanded animals and they were coming. But when it comes to man and he commanded marriage and he commanded marriage institution and commanded and commanded and, and home for you to, it is not automatic. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 3 says, if you walk in, the, in my status and keep my commandment and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season and the land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. So you see that the Lord, the Lord said, if you will walk in my status, then his then, then blessing shall manifest. So we now see the reason why the command the Lord gave to marriage is different from the, the command of fivefold blessing the Lord gave to marriage. Instead of it to automatically be so, there must be a precondition. That's a precondition of obeying God. That's a law we must obey. There are obedience we must put forth concerning God. If you will walk in the statue of God and keep his command, then he said he will bring rain in his season. That is, blessing will come at the time it should come. And then and, and the multiplication will come at the time it should come. And the fruitfulness will come at the time it should come. The minion that the Lord wants our, our marriage to be will manifest. So, your marriage is programmed, therefore, spiritually speaking, when the, Lord, when the Lord was joining man and woman together. So, just therefore, anytime we see godly marriage, that is, marriage holding in the Lord's presence, there is a command that the Lord has placed upon that mind. That is why it is important marrying in God's presence. There is a command God has placed upon that marriage. When you see a, a new couple walking down the aisles to the altar, there is a command. If they will walk in God's counsel, if they will obey the mind of God, if they will follow God's instruction, there is an automatic command that is going to come upon their life. The command that cannot change if they walk according to God's counsel. And those commands is what God is, what the devil is fighting against that will not obey it. But I pray for every one of us here. The devil shall fall short. The devil shall lose over the battles of our marriage in the name of Jesus. So when God ordained every couple he had joined, and every couple they had joined together to be fruitful. When the Lord, the, so when God had ordained every couple, he had joined together. He had pronounced upon them to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, to replenish, to have dominion. All these five blessings shall, hop, shall happen upon our marriage. Your marriage shall be fruitful. Your marriage shall multiply. Your marriage shall replenish the heart. Your marriage shall have dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. So what are these laws? The laws we must obey. The laws we must obey. What are the, There are laws we must obey. See, if darkness fills this place in the night, and there is Bob everywhere. There is Bob. There is Bob. So this place automatically speaking, had been programmed to have light if you know where the switch is. If you know where the switch is. If you don't know where the switch is, enter in the dark. It's as, it's as if you are caused. Because as you are coming, you'll be banging your feet against the chair. You are coming to the altar. You've not seen this place before. Wedding and marriage is like that. It's a journey. 
But there's a program of light in every marriage. Program of light. The devil, uh, the Lord knows that the devil will wage war, but there is program of light. He knows that darkness shall fill the heart and gross darkness shall fill the people. But in the book of Isaiah, that chapter, chapter 6, he said, but the Lord shall arise over you and the glory of the Lord shall arise on you. He said, Gentiles shall come to your light. In the midst of the gross darkness filling the earth, there is a provision of light that Gentiles must rush towards. So it is the same thing. If this place is full of darkness in the middle of the night, the lights are already here. All these lights are working. But you must know where the switch is. So it is the same thing that when the Lord ordained blessing upon every couple, there must be laws that the Lord wants us to obey. So the four, there are four laws. And the four laws are summarized together in Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 21. Colossians 3, 18 to 21. That is where we just find laws that govern godly marriage. Laws that bring light into every home. The laws that the devil has been fighting against. Colossians 3, 18. It says, Wife, submit, your, submit to your own husband as fitting unto the Lord. Husband, love your wife and do not be bitter towards them. That is verse 19. Then verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto God. Verse 21. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. If you look at those four verses, they speak to four groups of people. The first verse speaks, okay, let, let, okay, we have four rules, therefore, four commands. They are all commands. It is not a pleading. It is not a persuasion. It is a command. It is an order. When he says, wife, submit, husband, love, children, obey, father, don't provoke, they are four. So, but I'm going to start one by one. I'm going to pick starting from husband. When the Bible says, husband, love your wife and do not be bitter towards them, it's a command. Husband, love your wives and don't be bitter towards them, it's a command. You will look at each of these commands is a war. Each of the command is a war. When the Bible says, husband, love your wife, you, if you say it simply, you would think it is so simple. Uh, how many men are here? Are men listening to me? Uh, okay, are married men listening to me? Husband, love your wife. Do you have to be persuaded when you are in courtship to love your wife? Uh, answer me, please. Let's be very fast. Well, who, who was persuaded during courtship? During courtship. Somebody persuading you. Ah, love this sister. Oh. Love this sister. Love her very well. Oh. Who was persuaded there? Nobody need to tell you. It's as if all the dictionary of love is in your head. Ah, is it not in your head? You come in. How many of us have experienced that before? Me, I've experienced it before. You, ask, you, you during courtship, you won't go, go and greet your the sister. And then you talk, 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 talk. And then the sister wants to escort you. He has caught you. Oh, long journey, long journey. And you keep on talking, 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 talking. Until the sister realizes, oh, I've gone far. And then, oh, I cannot leave you like this. Let me escort you back. And then you escort him back again. Oh, long journey. And then when the sister has finally now gone, okay, good night, good night. It is then you will realize, ah, oh, no, Gio, what you go? It is that you realize it is love. It's as if you carry dictionary of love on your head during courtship. Nobody needs to tell you that. Why is it that after marriage, how many of us understand what I'm saying? After, even after one year in marriage, self, some people after six months in marriage, they, 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 then, then the sister is talking. The, the sisters like to talk. The type of the talk you have been talking during courtship, you go to a botanical garden, you sit down, you talk four hours. Just thing. Everything she's saying, you like it. But after marriage, the sister wants to keep talking. And then you, you now say, ah, sister, it's are you not tired of talking? I'm very busy. So you discover then they have a love. It's a war. You, how many understand what I'm saying? And sisters, how many understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So the sisters will be wondering. Uh -uh. 
She said, but Timo Man, so this is the word I always say before. I like talking and you enjoy hearing. But now, when she's talking, or on me, are you not listening? I'm listening. I'm listening. And then you are walking on the laptop. Are you not listening? I'm listening. It's a battle. It's a war. So whatever the devil is trying to wage war against in marriage is what you should rise So when you discover this is war. The Lord said, husband, love your wife. It's a command. Every command is a battle. Flee the devil. Resist the, resist the devil and he flee from you. It's a battle. To resist the devil is a battle. Run away from all appearance of sin. Run away from all, wherever you see appearance of sin, you want to run away, it's a battle. The same thing, command, love your wife, it's a battle. But I pray here that, that, that we will grow. I'm, I'm talking about our men. We will grow to the point that it no longer become battle again. In the mighty name of Jesus. But the love shall, 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 shall flow naturally. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, what is number one foundation of, of successful marriage? What's number one foundation of successful life? Love. God has given that command. Love your wife is a command. Say, love your wife. Now, if you would desire these five blessings of God for your home and marriage, and you so and you also want success in ministry and in godly home, you must obey this word. Love your wife. He said, love your wife. And then Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 says, husband, love your wife. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. This is where we come across the definition of love that Jesus is talking about. The command that we are to carry. Now we now see the, we now see the level of the love that the standard of the love that God is demanding from us. We see the standard of love that Jesus is asking for. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the marriage of Cana of Galilee, we see example of how wine of love can finish as early as possible. I consider it like a parable to me when I read John chapter 2. On the wedding day, the wine finish. The wine of love finish. Or even right on the wedding day, it is during reception, the wine has finished. But thank God that Jesus Christ was invited. How come that that, how come that, that became the first miracle of Jesus? The, wed, the first miracle of Jesus Christ was at wedding. The first institution of God was at the Garden of Eden. It's about marriage. It's as if when the devil has attacked the marriage, in the New Testament, Jesus came to start his miracle, to heal marriage as his first miracle. He was there, he was invited and he was there. And he was standing by. No other action, just standing by. Because he knew the devil has attacked marriage to the extent that even right on the marriage day itself, Wine has begun to finish. Wine of love has begun to finish. <laughs> Today, now we are beginning to see 24 hour marriage. We are beginning to see 36 hours marriage. We are beginning to see that marriage, the devil crumbled marriage to the extent that people begin to marry trees, mango tree. They begin to put ribbon on the, on the neck of goats. They begin to, they begin to take sheep, goats, animal to the altar. And one stupid Empty-headed someone will stand be saw before a man and a goat and be saying, We should know that that must that man himself is just animal in human skin. He said that who 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 who, who, joined, who brought this bride today, and so another man will now come and walk. That is how the devil has bastardized marriage. But in many Christian homes, the marriage is not as worse as that, but the devil still hates marriage. There are many, many women that are very sad. Many ministers' wives are very sad. But they wear and co and they come to church. Many women have, have enjoyed their marriage only at the first or second year of their marriage. They have not seen the man to enjoy him again. The man has turned something else. But I pray for all our marriages here. 
the Lord shall heal it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, he said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. That is the standard. Hey, that is the standard. So every man here understand. It is not the matter of, uh, honey, I love you. Honey, I love you. Honey, I love you. And then send it. Though, though women like that. Am I correct? We, yes, we love that. Honey, I love you. But it is more than that. As Christ loved the church. That is, as Christ overlooked all the problems of the church. Does Christ love the church? Does Christ love the church? Is church okay? Is church okay? Church is not okay because church is a spiritual hospital. Spiritual headache, spiritual stomach trouble, some madmen in suits sitting in the church, and yet, pastor preaching, and you see a man, correct man in suit, pastor is preaching, he's disturbing the pastor. Right hand guy, right on, right on. Hey, right on, right on. They didn't even allow people. I've seen people watching and listening to Pastor Simon before, and as Pastor is preaching, they are watching soccer. And, and as as and as Arsenal or Liverpool score in the church, they shout, "Is a goal!" Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Is, is, is that is that normal? We have different type of people in the church, and yet Christ is patiently waiting for us, patiently enduring to the perfection of the same. It said the fivefold gift is to work for the edification of the body, for the perfecting of the same. Christ is interceding for us. Christ is still waiting for us. As Christ loved the church, you love your wife. So you are not going to marry your wife, finish, and say that she's tight him and sorrow you. You talk too much. Ah, why, why, are you, why, why, are you, why are you doing like that to your wife? She likes to talk too much. No, you have married her. The love of Christ will make you to overlook whatever the fault. We came from different homes. Some came from Lekki, some came from Ipetu, some come from Moshu, some from Ekitis, one countryside. But the moment the Lord brings you together, you are one. And therefore, the blessing of God must begin to manifest the fivefold blessing. In this respective of where you come from, the command of God is that your marriage should be blessed. The command of God is your marriage should multiply. The command of God is your marriage should replenish the heart. That is, should give the heart what the heart is, is lacking. Your marriage should supply to the world what the world is lacking. Your marriage should be an ocean of joy. The world is lacking joy. What is lacking peace? Fight from your marriage. You should replenish the earth with joy. Replenish the earth. Your marriage should replenish the earth with joy, with peace, with favor, with enlightenment. Gifts should come out of your marriage. Instead of the devil quenching the fire of your marriage, the fire should ignite. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as Christ loved the church, that is the standard. And gave himself for her. That is the level. That is the level. And as Christ, that is the standard. Brothers and sisters, fathers, that you have wives at home, I pray for us. We will meet the standard in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Christ loved the church and he died for us on the cross. I am not asking you to die for your wife. But it, if it comes to dying, if, if, if it comes to that, there are some men that they cannot even feel the pain of their wife. So, if the, if, if the command come and said, uh, if the word of God came and said, uh, um, uh, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, and the question comes, can you give yourself for your wife? And some men will say that. Which one? Which one? Is it this one? This one? Can I die for this one? Ah. This one? Some people don't see value in the wife they have married. The wife, many people have prostrated. The wife they have begged. The wife they have solicited for before they married. How come after marriage the love has disappeared? When the Bible says that Love your wife as Christ loved the church that he gave himself for her. That is, you can give yourself for your wife. You can feel her pain. I am speaking to Ross about the success because if the marriage is wrong, ministry will not be right. There are though, there are a lot of men of God, there are a lot of ministers of God whose marriage has crumbled completely and their ministry is still going. May our life not be like Eli. 
Eli was practically sleeping in the temple, in the tabernacle. He loved the work to the extent that he was working there. When the hack was taken to the battleground, he, Eli was sitting at the doorpost waiting for the hack, waiting for the hack. So they now said, your, when they now brought the report, your two sons has died. Eli did not fall down at that time. Do you remember? He was still sitting. But the Bible says when he heard of the hack, then he fell backward. He loved the ministry more than the family. And then he fell backward. But that is not God's orderliness. That is not God's order. There are some people that they love the work of God more than their wife, more than their children, more than their home. The moment you miss the priority, the devil will come back to attack it later. I pray for every one of us we shall do the right thing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, therefore, what is the procedure of the love that the Lord wants us to love our wife? Find out the good things about Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. He who finds a wife, find the good things and obtain favor from the Lord. He who finds a wife. How many of us, I'm asking men now, because this is men's talk, I will still come to the women. How many of us find our wife? Or is it your wife that found you? How many of us find our wife here? How many find our wife? How many of us search for our wife here? Or is it your wife that search for you? Or is it your wife that proposed flowers and laid down before you? Because that is the madness of today now. Instead of men, to search for wife, it is wife that is searching for wife, for, for husband. They are turning the orderliness. Now he said, he who find a wife, find a good thing. The day you look for that person and you got her. There are some of us here, some men here. We knew what it means to search and find our wives. We, we knew what it means. If, if, if about three sisters have dribbled you and knocked you down once, when you find the right person, you will appreciate her. Am I talking to somebody? If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. I am in that association that brought sisters are dribbled. I dribble and dribble. And for sister to, instead of sister, we, we, I, I, the Holy Spirit led me to you. Even if I didn't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit led me to you. You are the best choice of my life. Will you marry me? And this I said, okay, let me go and pray about it. And she, and, and, and she was praying about it. First year ago, second year ago. And the Lord taught us, they taught us in our Sunday school. We, I grew up from a good Sunday school church. You can't, you can't propose to one person now. And then begin to propose to about four or five people, like a gamble, that whoever say yes first, like the madness of today. At that time, you have to wait. Wait. I have to wait. First year, second year, third year. Ah, ah. It's as if I'm inside the cage. I cannot go out. If this is not the will, tell me. If it is the will of God, he said, wait. Just wait. Are you not patient? Are you, are you impatient? I'm not impatient. I'm not impatient. I'm just asking for time. I, I, will, I will tell you. Just wait. Just wait. Now, at last, when he said no, uh, he, she didn't even say no. I was the one who discovered that she was hiring a brother. And then if the brother eventually said no, he will now come back to me. Somebody now told me, said, bro, Mike, pick, move, move on, move on. My, I, it was a prayer answered. Now, there are situations like that. But when you discover the mind of God, by the time, maybe God was training me, by the time I discover and the person I was to marry, I didn't even know if she's the will of God. Because at that time, I have fasted three days before. Marathon. Lord, if it is your will, let this happen. And it happened. And I went to the sister with confidence. Sister, the Lord said you should marry, uh, I feel you should be the will of God for my life. And the sister said, Brother Mike, I, the Holy Spirit ought to have told you that I am engaged. I said, ha. Ah. And I was respected on the campus. But I have trusted, I fasted three days. If this you are, if, Lord, if it is your will, let this happen. And it happened. What else am I waiting for? I went to the sister. The sister said, I ought to have known. I was the leader. I was respected. Brother Mike of the campus. And now came, and the sister said, Brother Mike, if the Holy Spirit ought to have told you. Ah, hello, Tony. You are, you are, you are, it's true. Over through the night, I didn't know if I slept or not. I was saying, why, Lord? Why? Why, Lord? Why does this happen to your son? I was ashamed of myself. So I have come through all those experiences. When I now had, again, 
that I should go and talk to one sister Shola Gloria. I say, ha. I don't know how to. This one is most beautiful among all the ones I've been talking to. <laughs> now, do you know what I'm talking about? All right, let me finish my story. If so, to, we are in the same. We are, I was the one coordinating the entire drama unit. The sister, how will I go and talk to this one? Well, let me, this time I ran. It is, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I can't even recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit again. <laughs> I just went to her. Sister, Holy Spirit has not sent me. Oh. <laughs> hey. Will you marry me or not? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. The Bible says, you will find a wife, find a good thing. If you go and you find your wife, the Bible says it is a good thing of your life you find. That sister you propose to is the good thing. He said it's a good thing and you obtain favor from the Lord. So from here I understand that the blessing of the Garden of Eden continues. Whoever it is, you are the one who went to go and look for him. And you prayed. And for anyone whom and many, many times God had intervened. God intervened so that we will not pick the wrong person. Many times God intervened. Like he intervened on my own part. And eventually made me to land in the hand of the right person. But when you pick, the Lord said, you have chosen good. And you have chosen favor. How many of us have goodness and favor in our houses here? I'm not talking about the by faith, I'm talking about by faith. I'm talking about reality. How many has goodness and favor? What is her name? What is her name? What is her name? What is her name? Henceforth, that is how the Lord wants us to look at our wife. Because that is your wife. That is the way God has looked at. I know some wives are here, they are listening now. They are happy. That their second name is goodness. And another name is favor. Whatever the name your name is, the Bible calls your original name goodness. And the second your original name, favor. So, in fact, you can make your wife happy when you get back home. If she's not here. If she's here, you can turn to her. Ah, ah, sister, favor, how are you? Sister, goodness, how are you? That is what the Lord, Lord calls your wife. You obtain favor. And she shall be goodness unto you. She shall be favor unto you. That is, there is a favor in her. Unless you discover it, you may not see it. There is a goodness in her. By the virtue of the covenant of the original institution. Unless you are patient. Unless you look well. Unless you align yourself with the counsel of God. You may not see that goodness. But I pray for every one of us. We shall discover it in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, first Peter. So therefore, there are things in her that will do you good. That will give you favor. You must find it out. You must extract it. Listen to me. The Bible says that man, Adam slept. When the Lord wanted to give him wife, he slept. He took one rib. And with the rib, he created the woman. And that has been, that, is, that has been the template. That has been what the Lord did. That is why every, woman, every, every lady is a missing rib of a man. And you know that is why we call them miss, miss, miss. That is they are missing, they are missing. They are just moving about. Until the owner find them. When the owner find them, they are no longer miss. They become misses that is found by a man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, what I want to bring out of it is that the person, that lady, that woman that the Lord said you should love was missing. Your missing rib that was found. By the help of God, you found the missing rib and it was placed back into your life. The misery was placed back. That is why it is madness. He said, don't be bitter against them. 
is anybody here bitter against any part of his body? Because your wife is a part of your body. Your, that is why it's a war. You must keep on insisting. When the devil is canceling it, you must stand upon it. When the devil is fighting against that love, you must fight it back. Why? Because look at this passage. There is a passage. I'm going to come to it, but I will go step by step. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Husband, therefore, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife, as to weaker vessel, and has been part of the um, has been heir together of the grace of life. Was that the end of the verse? Was that the end of the verse? Was that the end of the verse? What's the complete one? What's the complete? This is one of my favorite verses. Give honor to the wife. Likewise, dwell with her with understanding. Giving honor to your wife. Like a weaker vessel. As being all together of the grace of life. That your prayers may not be hindered. Ah. When I discovered this one. Eh? So, inside your house. Fire carrier brothers and sister. Inside your house. Dwell somebody that can hinder your prayer. You have married somebody. If you misbehave, if you treat her badly, if you don't give her honor, it is what the Bible says that your prayers, give her honor. Give honor to her that your prayers may not be hindered. When I discovered this, I understood that, okay. He said, give honor to the woman. How many, how many of us have honorable in our houses here? How many... I mean, honorable, not just of assembly honorable. All those ones are honorable by paper. But your original honorable, give honor to your wife. Is that not an honorable? I have, how many names has she got now? Goodness, favor, honorable. <laughs> now, look at the way God carries our wives. I pray for you, women. The Lord will establish you. And you will do the right thing at home in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm rounding up this aspect. I'm quickly going to the second aspect. It said, do I with her with understand? I'm not, I don't, I can't go over all this. I'm just picking that bit that some people are the architect of their own unanswered prayers. The way they treat their wives. The way they are bitter against their wives. The way they maltreat their wives. From God's point of view, you are not preparing yourself for beautiful homes. You are not preparing yourself for beautiful marriage. You are not preparing yourself for peaceful home and for fine, good, and beautiful ministry. Something is missing when you don't treat your wife well. Something will be missing, spiritually speaking, concerning your ministry. You can't have the best of it. You can't have the fullness of it. Concerning your marriage and concerning your home, you can't have the fullness of it. And you can now see that many of this type of thing is happening in our homes and marriages, even in the church. There are some, the way they treat their wives, the way they treat, always understand anything that will make you bitter against your wife is not from God, no matter the reason. It's from the devil who hates the institution right from the start. When God created Adam, everything was normal in the Garden of Eden. But when Eve came, Satan showed up because he knew the arrival of Eve it's an arrival of multiplication, arrival of fruitfulness, arrival of, of replenishing the earth, arrival of dominion. Because it was when the two of them came that the Lord now blessed them. The devil was angry at the coming of Eve. Up till now, the devil is fighting the marriage. But it will, it will fail over your home in the mighty name of Jesus. So therefore, dwell with them with understanding. You must learn to listen to her. When she talks, it's a battle, but you must win the battle. You must learn to listen to her, learn to understand when she's communicating. And then, give honor to the wife. And then, say, as a weaker vessel, they are not weak. They are not weak. The Bible says, as a weaker vessel. How many of us understand what weaker vessel is? Do you know what weaker vessel is? You know, weaker vessel is like ceramic, plate, ceramic, um, glass. Egg, those are weaker vessels. What about stronger vessels? Plastic, 
See, we have bottled water here. This bottled water here, we can drop it now. And it will hit the ground. And we pick it up again. That is stronger vessel. But can you just drop a ceramic plate like that? And it is ceramic plate you use in serving guests. You plate it in the place of honor. So the Bible says, treat them as precious vessel that must not be shattered, that must not be broken, that must not be mishandled. Now that your prayers may not be hindered. I pray for every one of us, wherever we have missed it, that we shall find solution in the mighty name of Jesus. Now point number two. That Ephesians chapter 22 to 25, that verse 22 says, Wife, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Your submission is as unto the Lord. It is after marriage that some women, when they are now talking, submit your wife to your husband, and they, some wife will be saying, which one? Is it this one? This one is not responsible. It's not this. It's not that. Your submission, it is not foolishness. Submitting yourself to your husband is not what it is an order from God, not today. I mean, do we understand that the devil is fighting that today? Is the devil fighting that today? He's fighting that today. They, br they brought the battle to the social media. Many times, if you, sh if I, if you should post anything on Facebook concerning this uh, efficient chapter, uh, chapter, five, chapter 5, verse 23, when well, chapter 22, uh, verse 22, wife, submit yourself unto your husband. Ah, you will see people running after you like bees. Ha, ah, does it mean, ah, are we a slave? Are we slave? We are not slave. We are created equal. We too have brain. We too have head. But the Lord said, husband is the head. Abi, is he no longer the head? This is the church of God. And we are saying the truth. Husband, the, the, is what the Bible says. Husband is the head. Well, if you say that one on the social media, some people will say, ah, ah, does it mean that your wife does not have head? Does it mean that we cannot think? Does it mean we are dunce? Does it mean we are fool? No. And then I want to say, every daughter of Zion, children of God, women that are children of God here, you, your life must not be dictated by the patterns of this world. Your heaven is more precious. There are some people here whom the devil has destabilized their home and the devil has destroyed their family. And they are looking for other family to destroy. Stand by the word of God if you want to enjoy your life, if you want to enjoy your home, you want to enjoy your marriage, you want to enjoy your ministry, stand by the word of God. And at the end of the day, if you want to get to heaven, stand upon the word of God. So when the Bible is saying, wife, submit yourself unto your husband, today we see the opposite in many places. Some wives are so arrogant. Some wives are so stubborn. Some men will have been in successful ministry if not for their wives. So there's, there's a particular uh, sister in, in, our, in, our ministry, in our drama ministry during a meeting. She just stood up. During one meeting, it was my wife that told me that during one of the meetings, the woman, the woman just stood up and said, hey, where, 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 where? Um, there, he said it in Yoruba. Let me say it in Yoruba first. I will not translate. Hey, where, 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 where? He said, woman that says so, that there's no one, there's no lady that does not have madness. It is just the fear of you that is suppressing it. Many things, many times, many times an instigation from inner man. A man wants to move. And, that, and, 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 and some, some women will just say no. Why? I don't know, but no. Okay, only, only give me reason. What if I don't want to give you reason? I say no. And you know when I say no, it is no. Many men will have moved far in ministry. But there is an obstruction for no reason. Women obstructing for no reason. Some women are so stubborn. Some women are so arrogant. Today, we have a lot of forces of evil working in the life of many women. And they are discipling other young ladies. They are telling... They are telling they are, they, they are telling ladies not to come to the level that the Bible said they should be. If you look at Sarah, you look, you look at great men of God in the scripture, look at Sarah, the Lord will speak to Sarah, move. And the Lord will speak to Abraham, go from your country to the country I will show you. Abraham will move. The Bible says, and Abraham went with Sarah. Sarah will follow. There is a weapon women have. If you can use that weapon, 
you can subdue every man. May I tell you the weapon? You can subdue your... It's no need to fight. You don't need to be arrogant. You don't need to fight him. Women are last born of creation. God created them last. They are the baby of the house. That is why they cry so easily. How many of us have, how many of us have babies of the house in the house? We have baby of the house. Am I correct? Even when, am I not correct that women cry easily? If, we, if you praise them too much, they cry. If you don't praise them at all, they cry. If you miss their, some people, if you miss their bad day, you will pay for it. Now, now, if they are the baby of the house, naturally speaking, who does father love more? Who does the father love more? And if you look at the Garden of Eden, when the Lord created the woman, the Bible says, and God brought her. Walking through the ISO. Walking on the ISO. Hey. God brought her. Where was Adam? Adam was standing by the altar. And God brought her. And God was walking. And then when Adam saw her, I mean, I was, I've seen such movie before. When the man saw, when the woman, when the man saw the woman being brought, the man, man would smile. Ah. Adam also smiled. Ah. This is the bone of my bone. Ah. This is the flesh of my flesh. I always imagine God bringing Eve and handed him over to Adam. This is my last born. Take care. Now, the woman has great power. The power the woman has. Your father is there. Report this stubborn man to your father. God will respond. Report the man now. Maybe it was your father who brought you to him. Report the man. When the man is seeing visions you don't understand. Because the man could be seen correctly. But you don't understand. Instead of fighting him, go to the father. Father, your son has come again. The man you gave me to. He's saying something I don't understand. I don't understand. Help me stop him. Make him restless. Let him stop. If it is the will of God for the step the man is taking, the father will tell you, my daughter, my daughter, it is my will. Follow him. If it is not the will, very simple. Many, many times, I have wanted to do a thing. I didn't know what she did. I didn't know what she did. And don't do it like this. Ah, no, no, we are going to do it. You know some men, when they carry vision, you don't see anything again. Ah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Don't let, don't let us do it. Don't you see that? No, I don't see that. Well. This is the will of God. This is what the Lord wants us to do. This is what I'm going to do. Ah, I should be quiet. Over the night, the Holy Spirit will just come. Are you normal? Are you okay? Is it the right thing for you to do? I mean, of course, what I'm saying. Thank you. So that I will know I'm, not, I'm not the only one in the house that is guilty of this. The next morning, I've understood. Uh -huh. um, that thing you said we should do. How do you say we should do it? How do you? <laughs> you know, men and their ego, they will not say, ah, honey, Holy Spirit came to me yesterday and he was telling me and I saw myself. No. Say, okay, okay. Present your idea. How does your idea? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> now you won. You have a father. Your father. When God had created everything, animal, trees, all the remaining raw materials, he gathered it together and he built you. So precious. Wonderful. After God had created man, God said, it is not good that this man should be alive. We make and help meet for him. And he created you. So you are wonderful. You are great. You are daughter of Zion. Learn to report your husband to your father. God will respond in the mighty name of Jesus. So that is part of the submission. Please, I don't know my time. Please, I don't know my time. Praise God. Verse 24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be subject to their, let wives be to their own husbands. Scripture 
It is the raw scripture. It is the word of God. We should abide by it. If you want to, you want to have a successful, peaceful home, you want to have joyful life, stand by the word. Don't copy the word. Don't live your life by the template of what is happening presently. We have a lot of women in Christ who are stubborn today. Some, some women, they have they have shut the mouth of their husband at home. And they are moving about in ministry. The man could not move. The man could not do anything. The woman is a tiger at home. But on the pulpit, I bring you greetings from my husband, the sugar of my tea, the honey of my bread, the everything. And if I, without him, I cannot be here. It's a lie. They go wherever they like. And then they will come and be saying that, everybody now wave your hand. We are online now. Only you are seeing them. They are waving at you. They love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. They just fought. Even when they leave the man alone and traveling around and the man is in cold and the man has no one to take care of him, they find it difficult to abide by the scriptures. And they go about raising other daughters of Zion after them. Therefore, I'm saying for all of us, sisters that are single, including, even including women that are married, they begin to tell them, I, 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 thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thank you. A woman was talking, if your husband cannot drop this amount of money, he's not an husband. If your husband cannot do this, she's not. It's not. And so when people hear that one, some women now become so stubborn. They get back home and they begin to look at their husband somehow. Hmm, is this her husband? Or horse? Band? They begin to question what they have been carrying around before. Therefore, I'm rounding up in this area by saying, this is the dangerous moment. Let us, let us be careful of the messages you will hear. Some messages are destroying homes. Some messages are making gentle sisters to become stubborn. Some, some messages are making some sisters who have been faithful, who have been humble, who have been submissive before to begin to question their faith. They begin to say, am I not a fool? No wonder. Some sisters that are very strong, the Lord brought you from from the rock, you are very strong. When you are getting married, you are prepared to wage the war against the devil with your husband. You are prepared to get to the battle. You are prepared to get to the, to the, to the Canaan land with your husband, no matter what happened. But suddenly, by what we begin to hear from different places, by books, by tapes, by messages, from some, from some men of God, from some women of God that are destroying homes now, by their word, they will not tell us the battle they fought when they were growing. They'll be telling us the victory they got at the top. And they, they, they don't prepare the youth to fight the same battle. They don't prepare the youth. They don't prepare them well to wage a battle of faith. They are putting their eyes on success. On the success. See me now. See me. Don't you see me now? I am a hard-working woman. I'm hard. Was that the way you started? Was that, was that the way you began? Did you fight battle? And so, young ladies who are supposed to fight battle at the beginning, they begin to rise up and say, me too. I have to make it. At which age? At how many times? May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, the devil is fighting war against marriage today, but the plan of God for our marriage is that it shall succeed. It shall be fruitful. It shall multiply. It shall replenish the heart. It shall subdue. Subdue unrighteousness. Your marriage should produce fruit that will subdue unrighteousness. Things should come out of your marriage that will impact the world. Your marriage must be so fruitful. I'm not talking only about biological children. I'm talking about spiritual impact of your marriage. There are some marriages when youths see some marriages, they love to marry. They want to marry. They begin to pray that the Lord should give them good marriage. There are some marriages that when youth see that marriage, they don't want to marry. They want to run away from marriage. Of recent, 
Th- so many, many things are, different things are happening that is making youth to begin to doubt marriage. Am I correct? They begin to run away from it. They begin to be afraid of getting married. But that is not the will of God. They are all battles of the devil. I pray for us that the Lord will sustain us. The Lord will keep us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. I am about to round up. I quickly want to read this one verse. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. There is a command. There is a promise in that verse. The command is train up the child in the way he should go. Child. Train up a child. Child, not man. Train up a child, not man. In the way he should go. The way you want him to go. The way the Lord had opened your eyes that your child should go. It was Anna who brought Samuel to the temple and dropped him there. And the husband said, do what, you, do what is in your heart. So the parent submitted Samuel at the altar. And, the, and, and he became the prophet. The Lord wants Samuel to become prophet, yes. But the parents agreed. Today, we leave our children alone to decide for themselves. But the Bible says, train up the child the way you want him to go. What you don't want the child to do, right from the small, begin to take it from his hand. What you want him to be, right from the beginning, begin to tell him. So there are many of us that we didn't give the right training to our children. You want your child to walk in the way of the Lord? But in your house, you talk against the pastor and your children are hearing. Every word you say is a plant of seed in the heart. You talk against the church of God and your children is hearing. The offering, we are, the offering we are giving all the time, the tithe we are giving all the time, we don't even know what they are using it for, and your children is hearing. I want them to wake, I want them to grow up and become sower and seeder in the kingdom of God. When you are already discrediting the seeding and giving, in their ears, train up your child the way you should go. When it grows, you will not depart from it. What type of movie you watch in your house and your children are there with you? You, are watch, you watch wrestling. Your children is there. And they see you saying, ah, be, 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 be. Lamale, lamale, lamale. ah, and your children is hearing, ah, you talk about my be Do you want him to be a wrestler? But they see you, you are the mirror. Train up your child the way you should go. You are a trader, you are a trader, you are selling things. In your house, you are mixing things together. Your children is in it. You are mixing coconut oil with, um, with uh, olive oil. You sell it as olive. And your child, you are, even if it is your child that you say, yeah, be, be olive oil. Yeah, be, yeah. yeah that yes. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Half bottle will be a hair. Yeah, that coconut oil, man. That man. And then you uh, 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 Olive oil, yeah. So to go, olive oil. And you want your child to grow up where? Well. You are training her. What type of dance do you dance? You came to the church, you dance to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In your house, you are dancing Yahuze. And your child is hearing. You are dancing to the latest. You are dancing Sazu. And your child is seeing you. And you are training up your child. Is that the legacy you want to leave to your child? Because... Your child is greater than you. Your child is greater than you. Every seed producer that is kind, your child should be greater than you. So you are sowing a seed that that child is going to grow up with. She may not display anything yet. She's a fertile ground. You are planting. You are planting. It may be three years, four years time that the seed begins to come up. Then you will now see him in the bedroom dancing. And then you open the door. Ah, you have forgotten. Ah, you forgot. 
You forgot when you were giving. Your child is dressing. Child is dressing. Correct it now. Your boy is sagging. Correct it now. You are talking about godly homes now. Eli, the, the Eli's children destroyed the ministry of their father. The father, God didn't say, Eli sinned. He said, for the sin you knew, and you restrained them not. Eli was so committed to the work of God, but lost focus of the training of his children. May the Lord heal our homes. May the Lord help us. May the Lord sustain us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much.